So your body works like a piston in the, in the golf swing. So it goes down and then it goes back up again. What we're interested in is the down bit. And we're interested in the left side, the lead side here, because we want to kind of try and focus on the, the left shoulder socket, left hip, left knee, left foot, because that's where the, the downward piston action is in the golf swing. And then when, once you've compressed down into the ground, you'll then fire back up and that's going to release a hell of a lot of club head speed. Plus you're going to get a massive amount of compression on the ball. You're going to squash that ball so it's going to ping off even harder. So you're going to get much more ball speed as well. Next time you watch the golf, watch any good player, watch the top of their head. And what you're going to see on the backswing is you're going to see that head is going downwards. And it's going down quite a bit. And then as the transition and come into the downswing, you'll see it go down some more. And then it'll kind of, kind of come back up as they come through the ball there. So they're compressing the body down into the floor. What's actually happening is the, the left side of the body is shrinking down. Okay, so we have the left shoulder, left hip, left knee is shrinking, working its way more down towards the ground. And we see that in the best players in the world. What they're also doing as well is when they're doing that is the shoulders are turning on a steep angle. That is really, really important. Okay, get your shoulders turning steep in relation to the ground. Put a club on your shoulders, make a turn, try and point it down. Just in front of the ball is a pretty good spot to get to. Uh, if you're not doing too good on that backswing, you're going to find that your shoulders are going to turn too level, clubs pointing way out in front. So use that as a drill because that left shoulder down, pointing downwards, is really instrumental in getting that compression on the golf ball. The reason why a lot of you can't compress that ball very well is because the shoulders, they, they come up off plane. So when you swing into the backswing, instead of your shoulders turning nice and steep with the floor, think of that left shoulder pointing down at the ball, they tend to turn a little bit too flat with the floor. Okay, very level with the ground there. So I've come up. The only way I'm going to get back down to that ball now is to compensate, possibly come over the top. I'm just not going to strike it very well. When you look at the best players, they're actually turning the shoulders very steeply in relation to the ground. And that's a key trait that we see. What that does as well, it gives the correct spine tilt. I've covered spine tilt in videos before. Your spine, when you actually swing, tilts towards the target. And in some players, top players, that can be up to a 10 degree tilt. You know, when we look at Garcia, he probably does it the most. And that's what I've seen on, on Gears 3D. So your spine actually tilts towards the target as you get to the top of your backswing. It's never tilting away, as a lot of you believe, because if it's tilting away, you're typically gonna, gonna be getting this, this kind of level shoulder turn, right? We've gotta get that steep shoulder turn. And that's actually what's creating that little bit of tilt towards the target in your spine. That's exactly what we want here versus here. It's well worth video in your swing because you've got to see whether your shoulders are turning steep or if they're flattening out too much on the way back. You've got to correct that. The best drill for it is the head on the wall drill. You know, if you stand there with or without a club, get your head on the wall and just make some turns, keeping your head on the wall. If your head stays on the wall, typically you're going to be turning your shoulders nice and steep. If you find it difficult to keep your head on the wall, because your shoulders are turning too level with the ground. It kind of feels like when I'm going back, my left shoulder's pointing down towards the ground. I can feel that left knee kind of flexing more. I'm really pushing downwards into the ground. I feel like my weight is going towards the target. And then from there, as I transition down, I feel like I can keep my back to the target and I feel like I'm really pulling the hands down and the club really quick to get into that perfect delivery position because then we can match the, the hands and arm movement up with the body rotation and then create all that extra club head speed on the way through. So you've got to exaggerate it, really feel as though you're, you're going right down into the ground. Okay, feel like you're really leaning in towards your target and then just drive that club down as quick as you can. Let's just demonstrate that then. So I'm really going to exaggerate it, get into the top, feeling like leaning into the target with my back. I feel like my left shoulder is really going down, pointing down towards the ball. And then just give it a rip from there. So 
solid. What you want to do as well, just to help you with your practice, is pick up a G4 swing trainer, super flexible shaft. The only way you're going to hit this thing is if you're pulling on the grip, because what you've got to do is pull the slack out the shaft. If you're swinging a rope, you need to pull on the rope to pull the slack out of the rope. So you're kind of using your, your pull of your hands and arms, but also the rotation of your body as well. You're trying to sync those two movements up together. If you get your body too far out in front, if you're trying to leave your hands and arms up and you know, get your body too far out in front, you're just not going to be able to hit this golf club. So to get tension through the shaft, so this shaft is solid when you're hitting the ball, you've got to pull it, you've got to pull on the grip end of the golf club, and then you've got to be getting the piston action in the golf swing. You've got to get that left side really going down on your backswing, and then as you pull the club in transition, and then you start to jump up and extend up, you then pull in upwards on the grip end of the golf club, and that helps the club release down at the golf ball. So that's the feeling I'm going to get from the top is pulling the grip of the club from the transition all the way into the finish. Solid. If I don't pull on the grip of the club and pull the slack out of the shaft, the ball's gonna sail 50, 60 yards off to the right with this club, or you're gonna strike it poorly. So the proof's in the pudding. If you can hit the G-force solid and straight, then the mechanics of your swing, the rhythm, tempo, timing, elements of it, are going to be perfect or you know near enough as good as you want them and that's what you want for a solid repeatable swing thanks for watching